Hey there, Justin Seitz here from AutomatingOSINT.com and uh, this is another video in my series of Python for Beginners that's going to teach you how to use the Requests module in Python. Requests is an HTTP library that really makes your life very easy when you're interacting with the web or trying to talk to APIs like on Twitter or Instagram. I use it all the time in my blog posts and in my training. So it's something I think that anybody who's interested in using Python for um, OSINT purposes, you really want to learn how to use requests. So this is a very simple script that I've written here to demonstrate some, some of the basics of using requests. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to run this file and we're going to step through the code together. So the first thing I have here is a good URL, which is to obviously the automating OSINT website. And then I have a bad URL to demonstrate what it looks like when we send out a request and we get a good response back versus a bad response back. Uh, you need to be able to handle these situations. Now the next thing you're going to see is a, header, a headers dictionary. Um, so when you're talking HTTP, you have the ability to send additional information off to the server. In this case, um, we want to set the user agent header so that when we're communicating to the server, it thinks that we are a Safari um, user or a Chrome user or maybe Internet Explorer. So we don't want to give away the fact that we're using Python to interact with this server. So we're going to send this header along with it. And that's very easy to do. Um, the next little piece here is the actual request that we're sending off. So all we have to do is use the request module followed by the get function. We're going to pass in the URL that we want to retrieve and we can send in our headers dictionary to optionally set the headers as you see above. Now, as I step over that, we can see that the response is going to be set. So we can actually see response 200. And what that actually is is the status code. So a common uh, set of status codes in HTTP, 200 means OK, we've got the content. 404 means content not found. 302 means uh, the content has been moved, so we need to follow where the web server points to. But in this case, we know that we got a 200 back, so that means that we did get a valid response and that our URL is good, which we know it should be because we passed in good URL. Now, if we use response.content, that's the actual content of the web page that we've just re retrieved. So we can actually print that out. And we can see my Google Analytics tracking code at the bottom and then a bunch of the source code from my site. So that's pretty cool. Now let's see what happens when we send off a request using a bad URL. So we're gonna just hover over the response variable. We can see 404. Now that's of course because the status code is equal to 404, this part of the code will not evaluate. And then we're going to print off a very simple little error message saying, hey, we failed to retrieve this URL and we got a 404. So this little code construct that I have here is actually something I use very frequently where I just say, did we get a valid response back? Yes. And if we didn't, um, then we just want to make sure that we let ourselves know that, hey, we weren't able to retrieve that particular resource. Now, this little chunk of code here, although it's very simple and we're not doing a lot here, this is how pretty much most of uh, my training starts. So most of my modules in my training is always going to start with a little snippet like this where we're reaching out, we're pulling down some HTML maybe before we parse through it in the case of a web scraper, or we're reaching out and hitting the Twitter API and retrieving back the JSON. Now in a previous module we talked about JSON, but what I actually want to do is show you how we can actually use the request module reach out to a Google service to retrieve some JSON, parse that JSON, and then actually make some sense out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a Google News RSS feed. So uh, Google News allows you to actually simply go to a section and, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of Google News, you'll see this little RSS link. And what it's going to do is output an XML but I hate XML and I love JSON. Um, the other little trick you can do, for example, is if you put the query parameter on the end, Q equals, and say terrorism, and hit enter, we're only gonna get results back that have terrorism 
uh, as a keyword. So this is pretty useful because you can actually create multiple feeds based on keywords that you're interested in and use Python to pull all those feeds out, maybe store them in a database to review later. So we're going to use that RSS output and we're going to feed it into a Google API that will actually convert RSS feeds into JSON. So this is an awesome little trick. Now, all we want to do is send that off and when we receive the JSON back, we're going to try to figure out what's inside of that JSON document. So take note that we've set a breakpoint on line 15 and we're going to say set current as main debug file and then we're going to run it. And our breakpoint gets hit. So now, as always, switch to your debug probe and let's see what the news variable contains. So if you remember our video on data structures, this looks like a dictionary already because we can see the curly brackets. Of course, we could say type news. All right, so and this is after the JSON has been parsed. So you can see response.content contains the response from the web server, and this is from the request module. So now we can explore this dictionary a little bit. We can say news keys. What keys are in this dictionary? So we have three keys. I'm just gonna expand my debug probe window here. So let's take a look at news response data. And this looks a bit more promising. We see a feed and a feed URL and some other bits and some entries. Okay, so the entries looks like it contains some of the actual uh, news articles. So let's go news response, if I could type, data entries. Oh, no key there. So I jumped the gun. Let's go response data dot keys again. Feed, aha. So that must mean we need to reference a feed variable first that we missed. So there we go. So we can see that we're slowly through trial and error kind of exploring what gets returned back from the Google News response. Now, entries is actually a list. So we can see there's a list because there's a square bracket there. Uh, of course, we could go uh, use our type trick again to say type. Aha, uh -huh, it is a list. So we see a few um, things here. So it's a list and inside of each list member is another dictionary. And that dictionary has some keys. So we can see publish date, we can see title. And if we scroll over, we see co the actual content here, right? So the content of it. So we could actually say, if we wanted to just grab the first item in the list. So we're gonna go up just by pressing up on your keyboard and we can take the first item in that entries list and we can ask for its keys because we know it's a dictionary. All right, so let's just output the published date, the title, and the link. So we can do this right in debug probe. So we can say for article in news response data feed entries. So this is gonna iterate over that list of entries and every time it loops over a new entry it's going to be stored in the article variable here so now let's just print this out so we're going to print out a string which is going to be the published date we're going to print out another string which is going to be the title and another string which is going to be the the link so we can say article published date whoops and we're going to say article title and we can say article link. Cool. So now of course what you could also do is let's say we actually wanted to retrieve that news item and also store that in a database. So we, not only do we just want to get the headlines but we actually want to reach out and grab that article. Well we could say um, going back to just nabbing the first one we could go request.get article link response 200. So we didn't store that in a variable, but you can see how you can begin to chain this stuff together. Now, if we wanted to add this back up into our, our main script, we're gonna stop the debugger. We're gonna back out that uh, right there, and we can literally from our debug probe, 
copy that code here, paste it in here, and we can save our file and hit run again. And there we have it. So every time you run this, it's going to print out the uh, top hits in Google News for the keyword terrorism. Now, of course, you could change this keyword to hockey. And let's try running that. Talking about the Blackhawks winning, talking about hockey season is over. So again, you could actually build up a list of keywords and continue to do this and store it all in the database and retrieve the other resources. And really at the heart of this is the fact that our hardworking request module is doing a lot of the dirty work for us. And we've also paired it with the ability to parse out JSON. So we have one more video that we're going to be doing where I'm going to show you how we can build a little utility where we can pass in a single username and check multiple websites to see if that username is used across multiple sites. If you have any other questions or you have any comments for me, please don't hesitate to email me at justin at automatingosint.com. I hope this video was useful for you. Try this code out. I'm going to put it up on the GitHub repo that I have. Um, you can find the link to that off of the Automating OSINT blog. Um, and please try this out. Try running the code. Try playing with it. And that is exactly how you're going to learn this stuff. Until next time, have a good one.